Jose Fernandez was taking the baseball world by storm up until his unexpected death on September 25th, 2016. Since that date, his death has generated mixed reviews by people to this day. After the autopsy report was released and revealed drugs and alcohol were in his system, and he was the driver who crashed the boat that killed two others along with himself, fans began to forget about him. Marlon's plans of a memorial statue were over, and the reality is, if Jose Fernandez was still alive today, his baseball career would be over and likely have been convicted of multiple murder charges. That's not the point of this video, though. Instead, it's to look at the baseball career of Jose Fernandez, who is the biggest what-if in MLB history. Only 24 years old at the time of his death, Jose Fernandez was already a top three pitcher in Major League Baseball. In four seasons, two full ones, he was a two-time All-Star and Rookie of the Year winner. Fernandez's rookie season was one of the best rookie seasons in MLB history as he went 12-6 with a 2.19 ERA in 182 and a third innings. That year in the NL, he ranked second in strikeouts per nine innings, first in hits allowed per nine innings, second in ERA, and adjusted the ERA plus and fourth in war. If those stats I just mentioned don't tell you how special his rookie season was, then maybe this will. In 2013, Jose Fernandez became just the seventh qualified pitcher in Major League history to post an ERA plus of 176 or better, a whip of 0.98 or lower, and a K per nine of 9.7 or higher in the same season. And the only three pitchers to accomplish that feat before him in a single season Pedro Martinez three times, Randy Johnson once, and Johan Santana one time as well. Following a historic rookie season, Fernandez carried his dominance from 2013 into 2014, but his season was short-lived. After a six-run outing against the Padres in May, Fernandez left with elbow pain, and the next day, the Marlins announced he was going under Tommy John surgery. It was an unfortunate end to his season as in 8 starts, he was 4-2 with a 2.44 ERA in 51 innings. After 14 months out of the major leagues, Fernandez returned to the mound in July 2015 and made 11 starts to finish the season. He returned to his former self, going 6-1 with a 2.91 ERA during the span and in 19 starts combined between 2014 and 2015 where he dealt with injuries and underwent Tommy John surgery, he posted a 2.71 ERA with a 10-3 record. Now fully healthy, 2016 would turn out to be the final MLB season of Fernandez's career. In 29 starts that year, he went 16-8, and posted 2.86 ERA, and had 253 strikeouts in 182 in a third innings pitch. What really hurts the most is how Fernandez ended his career. In his final big league start, he went 8 shutout innings and struck out 12 Nationals in a 1-0 win, and after the game, referred to it as the best pitching performance of his life. His last start ever was just a reminder how good he could have been and from a player's perspective is why I think he is the biggest what if in MLB history. Altogether, in his short-lived MLB career, Fernandez in 76 starts went 38-17 and with a 2.58 ERA in 471 innings pitched. He struck out 589 hitters and opponents hit just 209 off him. During his four-year career from 2013 to 2016, Fernandez ranked near the top of all pitching categories in that time span. His K per 9 and K rate ranked second in baseball behind Yu Darvish and his ERA and FIP trout only Clayton Kershaw. And those are just some stats to back up his greatness, but there's more, including his 253 strikeouts in 2016 being the fourth most strikeouts in a season for a pitcher 24 years or younger, or how about the 31.2 strikeout percentage of the batters he faced in his career? It's the best strikeout percentage in Major League history, minimum 50 starts. But the greatest Jose Fernandez stat of all is what he was able to do pitching at his home ballpark. In 42 home starts, he went 29-2. Yes, 29 and 2 with a 1.41 ERA, and opponents had just a 502 OPS against him. It's crazy to think how good Fernandez could have been, or if he could have gotten better, but it's hard not to think that way. He was only 24 years old at the time of his death, and his stuff was already elite and would have gotten better as he gained more experience and developed into his body. 
On top of that, he was already a top strikeout pitcher in baseball, and strikeouts have only increased, and offense production has decreased since his final season in 2016. As of today, Fernandez would currently be 29 years old, entering or already in the prime of his career, and it's crazy to imagine what his career numbers would have looked like right now. He was set to become a free agent concluding the 2018 season at 26 years old, and if he were still here, the chance of him setting the record for the highest contract ever given to a pitcher was pretty high. We saw Garrett Cole get 9 years $324 million from the Yankees two off seasons ago and Fernandez was 2 years younger than Cole when he was set to hit the free agent market. The death of Jose Fernandez changed the baseball world, especially the future of the Miami Marlins. It's unlikely they end up trading Giancarlo Stanton, Christian Yelich, Marcelo Zuna, or Dee Gordon in the following seasons. The team had the pieces to compete, but everything went downhill following the death of their ace and one of baseball's best pitchers. To wrap it up, it's unbelievable to see the success Fernandez had in the majors at such a young age considering the fact he never pitched in double or triple A. It goes to show how special a talent he was and he's a type of pitcher fans might not see for years or ever again.